competition so let's just jump right in jump wow you're very eager what are I you am, jumping into i am i am hope hopeful that i'm gonna win today you mean win <laughs> ha a good one <laughs> it is now time for <clears throat> games tracy lost in 2023 so we're gonna play them again so that she can have a rematch a thon what are we doing today now, for today's game we're gonna need some fish the last time whoa the last time we played this game it was actually with um, pumpkin, um, what are they called? What are those candies called? Candy corn? Mm-hmm. Pumpkin. Oh, were candy. they the apple, like the apple ones? Oh, we have apple candy. That's what it was. And we bobbed for the apples. Those were bad. However, we're playing bobbing for fish. What's more fitting than a fish in a bowl of water? Not like the ocean or a lake or a river where they belong. All right, we got. We got our candy fish. Time to swim, fishies. <laughs> Ooh, listen to that. All right, so the point of this game is you can't use your... Okay, you were saying. All right, the point of this game is you can't use your hands, you can't use anything, you just have to use your face to put it in the water, grab the fish, pull them out, set them on the table, etc., etc. Whoever I? gets the most fish, wins. Quin. If you get all your fish first, you win. Okay, can if I? If there are all the fishes out, you win. I'm ready, let me pull my hair back. <laughs> Where'd this water come <laughs> from? Suddenly I remembering that I literally felt like I was gonna drown the last time we did this. This water smells really wet. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the inside of my brain. Ready? Yep. Ready, spaghetti! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my God. What are you doing? <laughs> what? They're so slippery. <laughs> That's a real fish. Oh, this water is deep. <laughs> <laughs> They're so flat against the bottom. Tracy's drowning! Help! <laughs> the ball bubbles. Oh, I can't see. Pretty sure this water's a lot cloudier than it was a second. You've got some floaties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have, oh look at that! <laughs> look at that! Uh, I don't right. know. Oh, I can't think. How many? How many did you, you get? You know when you're a kid and you take swim lessons and like your nose just. Okay. Well, well I mean, when I took swim me. lessons, I had to like you. They teach you how to hold your, you know, like not get water in your nose, and it feels like it's burning all the time, and that's what my nose feels like. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got six. How many did you get? Oh my Zero, word! Eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Number two. Double time. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. When okay, church kids. I'm gonna go. I don't even know. Grab a towel. That's usually what you use to dry yourself. Cry. You're all gonna play a game? 
probably bobbing for fish. Probably not, actually. This is kind of gross and yeah. really messy. But anyway, enjoy your time. Goodbye. What's up, church kids? Teacher Chris here for another game. And let me tell you, it's about to be so tight. All right, this is what I like to call the human horseshoe. <laughs> so what I need is I need two per team, all right? So what we're gonna do is we need a tosser and then we need the person who's going to be the human horseshoe. The objective of this game is to get three hula hoops around your partner. Once you get three, you can take a step back from your partner. The person who is the farthest after the 60 seconds wins this competition. All right, and a rule and a suggestion is if you are receiving the hula hoop up and over your body, what you wanna do is you want to cover your face, all right, just like so, so that you do not get hit, no bloody nose, no broken teeth. Not here, not at church, kids. Not gonna happen. Teacher Chris got you. All right, find your person, find your horseshoe, and let's rock and roll. The, the game, game begins in three, two, one. Who hope in the Lord will become strong again But those who hope in the Lord will become strong again They will soar on wings like eagles They will soar on wings like eagles They will run and not grow weak They will walk and not grow tired They will run and not grow weak They will walk and not grow tired Isaiah 40, 31, yeah Building my strength, earning my wings, man, I'm earning my ranks. Praise our God and I give him my thanks. See my sin and they walk in the plank. Christ like setting, we all on 10. With G-O-D, we all gon' win. No matter what you did or where you've been. Love and grace, that's who he is. For those who hope, see, I got hope. Christ, grace and faith alone. God's glory, not my own. Can't switch up when I'm in my zone. We bless, we bless, we bless, we bless. Let be known up in the Northwest. Do it real big and holy steps. Hear me out so you don't forget. For those who hope in the Lord will be strong again but those who hope in the lord will become strong again they will soar on wings like eagles they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weak they will walk and not grow tired they will run and not grow weak they will walk and not grow tired So if I have hope, that means I should be able to be happy all the time, right? Not at all. Oh. Life is hard. There are emotions like fear, anxiety, worry, doubt, anger. We all walk through really hard things. Having hope does not mean that you have to be this happy robot all the time. I am a happy robot. Wow.
Well, that's good yeah, because yeah. sometimes in my life, I believe God has a plan, but that plan is really hard to see and can be discouraging sometimes. I totally understand. Like we talked about last week, we know God's character. We know he is good and he cares about us. So when life seems hard and moving forward seems impossible and like we can't take another step, we can have hope and cling on to God with everything that we have. Our memory verse is Isaiah 40, 31, which says, but those who hope in the Lord will become strong again. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weak. They will walk and not grow tired. See, this verse doesn't say that hard things won't happen in life or that it will be easy, but it does say that when we put our hope in God, we will make it through. Let's take a look at our lesson for today. Whew, this last postcard was a tough one, but everyone at HQ really came together and helped me find the links I needed. I wonder what new postcards we have. Let's take a look. Wait. That's weird. There aren't any postcards. What? You're not serious. Did you, what did you just say? There's no postcards? Oh, come on. Whoa! What are we supposed to do without any postcards? Wait, we don't have any postcards? <laughs> did Mailman Mark already come? <laughs> maybe, maybe the postcards are just lost in the mail because of the storm. Wait, 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 wait we ran out of postcards? That's, that's not no, possible. No, that's no, possible. No, 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 no. There's not any postcards. Why is this thing never working since we've had it? Wait, 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 just hang on for one minute. We'll get this figured out in no time, I think. So, apparently the storm is the reason why Mailman Mark hasn't brought any postcards. And there hasn't been any walk-ins, probably because of the storm too, so... <sighs> we don't know what to do with our time. Hey, Mike. Can you help me open this? Yeah? Ooh, what is this? Let's open it. This is a time capsule. <gasps> I always wanted to find one of these. I wonder what's inside. We should open up and see. No, wait, Mike, there's <sighs> nothing inside it yet. Aww. That's disappointing. Mike. I'm kidding. <laughs> kind of, not really. I've always wanted to bury a time capsule of my own. I love the idea of telling people 50 years from now what the past was like. And, you know, since it's a rainy day and we don't have any postcards. Awesome. Are you going to let anybody else put stuff in this? Maybe a few other people, but... It's not very big, and I really don't want this whole thing to get out of hand. <laughs> I just want to fill it with things that show people how special Connect HQ is. I think we can do that. It'll be fine. A time capsule? Really? That sounds like so much fun. You know, my brothers and I got to dig up a time capsule that my great-grandpa buried. It had the coolest stuff in it. Thanks so much for asking us if we want to add anything in it. Of course. Hey, Dot, what, what was that? Oh, nothing. I was just texting Jaden. Now, remember, the time capsule isn't very big, so you need to keep your items on the smaller side. That'll be easy. Hey, Alyssa. How are things in here? Well, Tony, Cat, Dot, and Harper all got me their things, so it shouldn't take too long to get it in the capsule. Then once the weather clears up, we can find a place to bury it. Well, that sounds fantastic. <gasps> are we too late? Huh? Too late for what? For adding something to the time capsule. Dot told me about it, so I brought my family's famous pizza seasoning. And these are sketches I've been working on for years. I'd love to share them with people in the future. Seasoning and sketches? I mean, I guess we could. Don't forget about us! No Connect HQ time capsules complete without the great Skywing and the Daring Die. Guys, I, I don't think all this is gonna fit in the capsule. But I mean, we could always get a second one. <gasps> Thanks, yes! Captain Alyssa! Yes! Oh, the What Nuts group will be so excited to hear about this. Wait, what? Oh, well, I told the What Nuts group about the time capsule, and they have tons of art supplies they want to add to it. Yeah, and we were talking with the Tech and Tools and the Foodies group, too. They have stuff for the time capsule as well. Uh... Well, OK, so I triple-checked my work and measured everything three times, everything in this room, and... We may be able to get this done with 45, maybe 60 more time capsules, give or take. Uh, everything is definitely gonna have to be way more compact, so, uh, sorry, soccer ball, it's whoa, about whoa, to- Whoa, whoa, Mike, this isn't right. Well, I, I'm, I, know, I know, but it's gotta be smaller, and I, I know you wanted things not to get out of hand, but they totally did, and I don't know why you're surprised at this point. That's not what I mean. Then what do you mean? I wanted this time capsule to tell people in the future what makes Connect HQ so special, but all this stuff, Mike, if you were to tell someone what makes Connect HQ so special, what would you say? Well, 
I guess I'd say something like, there's a lot of hurting people in the world. Right. But here at Connect HQ, we get to give hope to those hurting people. We get to say every single day, let's spread our hope in Jesus to all who see us. And that and the people that are here and the people that have been here and have worked here, I think that's what makes this place special. Let's spread our hope in Jesus to all who see us. Mike, that's it. Come with me. What? I, but I still have to... Hey, everybody. Is the time capsule ready? Can we see it? It has been so much fun picking out idols for it. Well, I'm really thankful for all the thought you guys put into putting your items into the capsule. Why does it feel like you're about to give us bad news? It's not bad news per se. It's just a change in direction. I know the items you picked were all really special to you, but I want to tell people in the future what made Connect HQ so special. And I think that thing is hope. So we're going to film the time capsule with hope? How does that work? Oh. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know, but I have faith in all of you guys, and I think if we put our heads together, we'll figure something out. Give it some thought. We're gonna go clean up the hub, and we'll come find you when we're done. Okay, what if we filled the time capsule with things that rhyme with hope? A uh, rope. Joke. Cantaloupe. Yeah, I don't think rhyming words are gonna cut it. Hey guys, how's it going? Well, turns out putting hope in a time capsule is a little easier said than done. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure anybody's gonna wanna find a 50-year-old cantaloupe in a time capsule. Ew. Yeah, it wasn't my best idea. I know this is tough, but I really think this is something we can do. Think, is there anything you've seen or heard since you've been here at HQ that has given you hope? You know, there's a story in the Bible archives. It's one of my favorites. I think it can really help us right now. The church is the building we go to when we want to learn about God. Nope, this is a church. Those are people. Yep, in fact, it's you and me. You kinda lost me. The church isn't a building. The church is the people who have made Jesus the leader of their lives. And that's us. We don't go to church, we are the church. And we exist for the world. Oh, okay. I still don't get it. Let's look in the book of Acts. That's where the Bible talks about the very first church, the people who first believed in Jesus. They didn't have buildings to meet in, so they met where they could, usually in people's homes. So their church was a house? Nope, the church met in houses. Even then, the church was the people. And the apostles taught them many things about God. They did great and wonderful things with God's power. God did amazing things through everyone in the church. Through all the people? How? The people of early church put others first. They prayed together, they shared meals, they shared their time, they shared everything. Everything? Really? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. The Bible tells us that when one of them needed something, others shared what they had. They even sold things and used the money to help out. That's amazing. That's putting others first. The early church was really good at it. For instance, this one guy, Joseph, sold a field and brought the money to the people of the church to help those who needed it. Awesome! What made them do that? They all agreed. They all wanted to live like Jesus, and the apostles told them how Jesus put others first when he died on the cross and went up to heaven. The early church learned about Jesus and lived like him, so they put others first. I think I get it. Great, but you haven't heard the best part. When others saw how those first church people lived, it made them want to follow Jesus too. In fact, more people decided to follow Jesus every single day. Wow, God did do amazing things through the first church people. And God still does amazing things through his people when they live like Jesus and put others first. Right, because we are the church. And we exist for the world. The people of the early church spread hope to everyone around them. They gave, they met the needs of others, and they taught people about Jesus. And everyone who follows Jesus can do that same thing today. We're a part of God's church, and His plan for us has always been to share the hope of Jesus to a hurting world. The Bible video was a great idea, Tony. And I bet you there are some other videos in the archives we could put in the time capsule, too. I could help track some more down. That would be awesome and super helpful. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <gasps> this is my 
favorite part. Shh, I don't want to miss it. Hey, what, what are you guys watching? Come on, tell us. Well, we just... We made a verse video all about hope. And I directed it. We thought it would make a great addition to the time capsule. Do you want to watch? Of course. Rodney, did you give me some hot chocolate? Yep, with extra marshmallows, just like you like. Oh, thank you. Hey, there is barely anything in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Okay, well, the last time I got hot chocolate, it overflowed and it spilled out all over me and it burned. Ooh. Ouch, I'm sorry, that sounds painful. Tell me about it. But I did learn an important lesson. It is never good when something overflows. Mm, I don't think I'd say never. Really? Come on, tell me one thing that's good when it overflows. Okay, say a verse with me. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Goes like this. Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13. You will overflow with confident hope. You will overflow with confident hope. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. When you have hope in Jesus, it isn't just for you. When you trust God, the Holy Spirit will make hope grow in you until it spills out. So you're telling me I can overflow with hope? Yes, that's right. And when you do, uh, the people around you will see your hope and it'll make them want to have hope in Jesus too. That's... Awesome! The Holy Spirit is awesome! I can't believe I was so scared of overflowing! <gasps> I'm gonna go make more hot chocolate! Oh, Rodney, I'd still be careful! Ah! I love that when we trust God, the Holy Spirit makes our hope grow and grow until everyone around us can see it. And there are so many ways to spread hope. We can love other people, serve them, and even forgive them if we've been hurt. I can't believe you guys put this together so quickly. Well, we had a pretty great team. Man, I can't wait to add it to the time capsule. It's perfect. Hey, have you guys seen Dot or Harper? Oh, they came by earlier, but we told them we were working on this first video. It did seem like they had another project they were working on. Well, I guess we should track them down. There, that's perfect. Yes! Ready? Ready. And done. Hey, you two, so what are you guys working on? I don't think they're ready for this. Oh, they're definitely not ready for this. <laughs> Come on, you two, out with it. Well, we heard some of our friends were tracking down Bible stories and creating verse videos for the time capsule. So we thought it would make sense to make a transmission to tie it all together. And since this transmission is all about the hope we get to spread here at Connect HQ through the church all over the world, we thought we'd ask some friends to help us make it. Okay. Just watch. Hey friends, I can't tell you how thankful I am for Connect HQ and God's house. Anytime that I've gone through a hard time, you guys have been there for me every step of the way. And God has used you to help me and many other hurting people find hope. It's like it says in the book of Romans. Romans 15, 13. You will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. As you've trusted God, the Holy Spirit has made hope grow inside of you for everyone to see and you have helped others trust God and find hope too. Thank you. The people in the early church spread hope to everyone around them too. They gave to others, they met their needs, and they taught them about Jesus. And God calls us to do the same every day. And that is exactly what Connect HQ does. You share the hope of Jesus to people who need help every day. And all of us who follow Jesus can do the same thing. And that is one great part of being the church. Wondering how you can spread hope to the world around you? Ask God what you're good at. Use your skills to love and serve others. Be a friend, listen to people, and forgive them when they hurt you. Don't forget, let's spread our hope in Jesus to all who see us. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Ah. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not crying. You're, you're crying. You're, you're, you're crying. We're both crying, Mike. Okay, maybe we are. So, does that mean you liked it? It's perfect. You know, I love any chance I get to see my friends. This was everything I wanted the time capsule to be. It really showcases just how special Connect HQ is. 
Mission accomplished. Yay! <laughs> We just finished burying the time capsule with everyone else. And you would not believe some of the weird stuff we found. You know, one of the weirder things was that milk carton. Oh, oh yeah. Like, it smelled so bad. We even found that rubber duck. It was, it was actually really cute. Oh, we even found chocolate gold. It was so cool. Dot, that was dirt. Mike even said he's not coming in until he finds a dinosaur. And the gummy bears. When we choose to follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit makes hope grow and grow inside of us until everyone around us can see it. If you want that kind of hope and you've never made the decision to follow Jesus and make Him your leader and number one friend, you can do that today. All you have to remember are the ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that choice? If so, we are so excited for you. Be sure to talk about it with a parent or a leader you trust. Remember, church kids, putting your hope in God doesn't mean you have to be happy all the time. Life is hard, and it's okay to be honest about your struggles. That's right. But we will put our trust in God and cling to Him as we walk through life because His character is good and He loves us. We will see you next week. And remember, it's a great day to be, to be a church, church kid! kid. Yeah! Woo! Do this for the Hope Rose! Let's go! show! Church kids, in case you didn't know, we wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you. Yes, you. And He loves you so much that He died on the cross for your sins so that we could have salvation, which means we are in right standing with God. When we ask Jesus into our heart to be the leader and Lord of our life, we no longer have to walk in fear or in shame because when God sees us, He sees the righteousness of His Son, Jesus. Salvation is a free gift to anyone who says yes to Jesus. In fact, in Romans 10, 9, it says this, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if today you want to make the decision to make Jesus the leader and Lord of your life, now is your moment. Are you ready? As a sign of support, let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, Welcome to my world. I ask you to come into my heart and to forgive me of all of my sins. I decide today to follow you and to make you the leader and Lord of my life. I believe it, I receive it, and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you. Make sure to tell a church kids leader so we can celebrate with you and give you next steps.